Hello users and welcome back to another episode of Above It All and today we're going to be talking about Portland once again. The Border Patrol was responsible for an arrest in Portland, an internal memo attain, obtained exclusively by The Nation details a coordinated program of domestic counterinsurgency by Ken Klippenstein. So, um, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see images of the memo itself. Um, but I'm going to read the write-up and give you the gist here. So, for days, federal agents in unmarked cars have reportedly been snatching Portland protesters off the streets. On Thursday, video emerged of federal agents clad in camouflage fatigues and unspecified police patches apprehending one such demonstrator and placing him in an unmarked vehicle. Social media lit up with a speculation with speculation about the intentions and the identity of these agents. A memo consisting of internal talking points for the federal agency responsible for the arrest, customs and border p protection, and obtained exclusively by the nation provides some answers and raises even more questions. Why is the why why is the customs and border protection in Portland? <sighs> Oh, Lord. Dated July 1st, the memo is titled Public Affairs Guidance, the CBP Support to Protect Federal Facilities and Property, and marked for official use only. It describes a special task force created by the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, in response to to President Trump's executive order on protecting American monuments, memorials, and statues, and combating recent criminal violence. That task force, the Protecting American Communities Task Force, oh, so cringe, has been tasked not only to assess civil unrest, but also to surge resources to protect against it. Again, this is why it matters when you have a fascist in the White House. This is why it matters when you have a neoliberal pass laws. Oh, it's okay. I trust Obama with these laws. God, neoliberals are so fucking stupid, but I'll get into that later. The Portland arrest of Mark Pettibone, first reported by Oregon Public Broadcasting, followed several similar arrests involving officers from a Border Patrol Tactical Unit, CBP's equivalent of a SWAT team, as well as the U.S. Marshals Special Operations Group. Why do they always come up with these fucking bizarre titles? I'm a special operative! Oh, look at me! I'm a Border Patrol Tactical Unitarian! Like, bitch, you're a LARPer. You're LARPing right now. You're a fucking loser. You're a nerd. Like, holy shit. Violence anarchists have organized events in Portland over the last several weeks with willful intent to damage and destroy federal property as well as injure federal officers and agents, said the CPB spokesman. These criminal actions will not be tolerated. That's the thing. Right, That this is the thing here. If the argument is, if you desecrate public or federal property, you go to jail. If that is the argument, okay, all right, accept that as the argument. Then why are they taking random pedestrians off of the streets, kidnapping them without identifying themselves, holding them at gunpoint, right? Like, that's the thing. It's like, okay, you're going after the rioters, the looters, the, the violent anarchists. <gasps> Ooh! Right? Like, you're going after them, right? So why are pedestrians being fucking snatched off the street? That's so weird. Like, isn't that just so weird? It's almost like big government tyranny has come to our front fucking door. I've covered many videos. Police shooting at people's windows three stories up in apartment buildings. Someone had their phone out, recording out the window, and a police person shot a rubber bullet at the window, breaking the window. That's weird. That was in Louisville, Kentucky. You see in Minneapolis, people on their porch 
having a fucking militarized like tank wa- like drive through their street and having soldiers run up to them, shoot at them while they're on their porch, mind you, screaming, get inside. Like, I thought conservatives were stockpiling arms to fight big government tyranny. Like, hello? The Talking Points memo identifies a series of potential questions, including many of those being asked in response to the Portland arrests. In several cases, it instructs CBP officials not to answer them, citing operational security. For example, in response to questions about where CBP personnel are being deployed, the memo says it would not be appropriate to disclose law enforcement operational specifics which could could jeopardize operational security. As for the questions about when CBP personnel will be deployed and for how long, the memo states, we do not give out operational specifics. However, we hope the support will be short term just for the July 4th weekend. (laughs) The CBP spokesman, however, did not give any indication the operation would be coming to an end. The Department of Homeland Security and its components will continue to work tirelessly to reestablish law and order. Again, whose law and whose order? Like conservatives a couple months ago during the anti-lockdown protests were like, government tyranny! I got it! And then, like, now, they flipped the script 180 degrees. Now it's government tyranny. What? No, we love the government. I love the go- President Trump, God bless you, sir. God bless you. They went from, like, fucking, like, normal fucking person to, like, oh, look at me. Oh, God bless America. Yeah, God dang. Son of a bitch! I'll go law and order, man. Shit! God dang law and god dang order! I I love the government. I got all those guns. I'm out of you know god dang, but it was old Bammer. God dang old Bongo is the reason why I got dang got those guns and trunk in our god dang. Like seriously though, like these people are fucking freaks of nature. Like seriously, like Republicans conservatives as they like to call themselves in their fucking LARP in their fantasy world are fucking bizarre they're disgusting criminals like seriously like talk about thought like fucking thought crimes these people literally cannot even think let alone are they capable of thought crimes like they can't think they don't have brains Jesus while many people have criticized the alleged lawlessness of the arrests some even engaging in conspiracy theories about them These arrests are likely legal, according to current and former federal law enforcement officials interviewed by the nation. And that's exactly what makes them so troubling, explains Jen Budd, a former former senior Border Patrol agent. During the D.C. protests, many agents removed, federal agents removed their insignia, Budd explained, referring to a June 1st protest in front of the White House, where protesters were tear gassed. What the agencies discovered was that they could do this without much blowback from Congress, Bud explained. A former senior DHS intelligence officer explained that while federal agencies are required to wear identifiers when conducting arrests, NCIS agents have to wear both marked jackets and hats during arrests. For example, that is not the case with the DHS. The fact is, they don't have to do anything in marked vehicles, he said. Such operations happen all the time and are at the discretion of supervisors. Talk about the deep state. All these Republicans out there, oh, the deep state. God bless Q. Q's gonna defeat the deep state. Talk about the fucking deep state, right? It gives them a tactical advantage. They will find a way to justify it, a current DHS official told the nation. I'm putting my hat back. I like wearing the hat in my videos. It makes me feel folksy. But just because the practice is legal, that doesn't mean it works in law enforcement's favor. It's good for public image to have visible police present. Jesus. To have a visible police presence as a deterrent. 
the former intelligence officer said. The memo also addresses the questions of whether CBP will deploy drones again. CBP formally de- deployed a predator drone over Minneapolis to the consternation of many in Congress. That's a good word. Who sent CBP a letter exacerbating ex exoriating jesus holy shit man i'm learning a lot reading these fucking articles exoriating this is why you got to read kids seriously the agency the memo instructs cbp representatives to respond at this time cbp air and marine operations has assets on standby to assist if needed Again, this is why Obama was such a failed president. Obama will go down as one of, if not the worst president in history, because a lot of these laws that Trump are using were developed during the Obama administration. Like the kids in cages were developed during the Obama administration. The ICE facilities were developed in the 1990s under Bill Clinton. And then in the 2000s, George W. Bush created ICE, and then they used those facilities. Then Obama took office, started caging up up migrants deporting people reminder he deported more people than anyone ever any other president at in history up until that point all right and then you 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 give trump concentration camps with kids in cages and then trump's like all right i'll up the game a little bit this is why obama was such a failed president Though CBP frequently uses drones to conduct border surveillance, the Minneapolis incident appeared to be the first time that they had done so in response to domestic protests. Bud believes the DHS has undergone a mission creep phenomenon, wherein its mission and authorities have gradually expanded over time, a process carried out cumulatively over the Bush, Obama, and Trump administrations. Mission creep is what CBP, Border Patrol, and ICE have been engaged in since 9-11, exactly. Clinton built the fucking facilities. Bush populated the facilities. Obama exacerbated the facilities, added more people, stuffed the kids in there. And then Trump starts killing the kids. Trump starts doing family separations. Trump starts accidentally loses 1,488 kids. I wonder how that's possible. Look it up. There was that story in 2018. Jesus Christ. There are all sorts of interesting powers that the CBP, ICE, and Border Patrol have under Title 42 pandemic law, which has been triggered with Trump's COVID-19 national emergency declaration. Even though he claims we should not be in a pandemic lockdown, he refuses to lift the emergency declaration This gives because this gives agencies the more... This gives these agencies more authority. All of this is legal because of vague and broad authorities given to these agencies after 9-11. So again, I didn't actually know about the pandemic law. That is actually the auspices, uh, apparently, to provide a lot. Like, normally, this shit would be illegal. But because of the executive declaration of a national emergency, it is technically legal. And again, talk about a deep state. Like, this shit is like, like these major decisions that impact thousands of people's public safety are up to, like, one supervisor. Talk about the deep state. Right? Like, this is the thing. is like, conservatives are fucking stupid. They're dumb. They don't know anything. They're just fucking children. And the, the problem with that is, like, they're not only content with being uneducated and stupid, they bask in it. They glorify it. They idolize it. The anti-intellectualism of the right wing is at an all-time peak. And this is the biggest like, distinction between the Nazis of Germany and the Nazis of America, is that the Nazis of Germany knew how important education, science, studying, and history were. Whereas the Nazis of America today don't know anything. They're just dumb, redneck fools. They're losers. And like, again, the worst part is like for me, like sometimes I struggle saying a word. I don't care. I look it up. I learn the definition from context clues. I move on. That's okay. But a right winger will see a word that they don't like or don't know the definition of and then close the tab and talk about the liberal media and the elites and the coastal elite. And it's like, bro, what? 
Just fucking Google it, dude. Like, again, I get all these people saying, Communism is evil, don't you? Like, Google the word. Like, Google communism. And then, like, that's the problem with right-wingers, is every time we try to debate with them, the problem is we cannot debate with them because the words that we are using in debate, they have completely different definitions for. Like, and, and, and it's like all of our definitions stem from the dictionary, but all of their definitions stem from like Glenn Beck, Rush Limbaugh, like 1990s conspiracy theories that have just been snowballing, you know, like a fucking ball of snow going down a fucking snowy hill. And like with each fucking roll, it gains more snow and gets bigger and bigger. That's what this is. The conspiracy theorists that were developed in the 90s, like the Glenn Becks and the fucking Rush Limbaugh's, right? Then throughout 9-11, the post-9-11 war on terror era, reminder, what was it, only like 3,000 people died in 9-11? Maybe 4,000? I'm forgetting exactly. Multiply that by 10, and then multiply that by like 3. And, and, and we're not even close to the end goal for coronavirus. So it's like, when you realize that 9-11 like, wasn't that big of a deal in comparison to what we're going through right now, but that it was used to enact propaganda so thick, so nefarious and pernicious that it completely brainwashed millions of people. Millions of people destroyed their brains from the war on terror. They turned their brains off they stopped accepting new information. Like, that's why when we talk about, you know, Trumpers, a lot of Trumpers pretend like it's 2016, like it's October of 2016, and Trump's a wild card, and he's fighting the deep state. When it's like, we have four years of policy. We have four years of action that Trump has done. 140,000 deaths from coronavirus. And they still act like it's October 2016. Because they're fucking stupid. They turn their brains off and refuse to accept new information. And that's... Our country is doomed.